Use that cannon reloaded. Yes, sir. Brander, General, sir. You having fun, Chief? Oh, Brander, I gotta say, this is the best fun I've ever had. I mean, it's really a lot of fun. Chief. Huh? Chief. Oh, yeah, sure, Brander, sure. Ready? Dust yourself off. It's party time. Whoa. Medic! Medic! I'm not getting the pulse, sir. This is Robert Hopkins from Company E, 4th U.S. Colored Troops. He was the soldier assigned to shoot Will Davies, the flag bearer. Can I talk to you, Mr. Hopkins? Mr. Hopkins, this is your weapon, this 1861 model Springfield? No, I rented that in my uniform from the stand outside. Oh, is that from Ray Innes? Yes. Did you load this yourself? No, I didn't. They come loaded with a blank. Uh -huh. Nancy, would you run this through ballistics, please? Yes, sir. Yeah, have a seat, would you? Did you shoot him? I'm pointing a gun and pull the trigger. That's what my reenactment commander told me to do. Did you see him get hit? All I saw was smoke, then he fell. I was sure he was acting. Was there anyone else around you, you know, in your proximity that could have shot him? I don't know. I, you know. It's kind of crazy out there. You know? Guns firing all around me. Guys firing their guns because they can. Yeah, it's all part of the fun. Did you know him? The victim? Mr. Davies was one of the organizers. I met him when I signed up. Uh-huh. Chief? Yeah. Here's uh, some of the ammo we found, or at least uh, I think it's ammo. Yeah, that's a cylinder mini miniball. Uh, U.S. adopted it in 1855 to better improve accuracy. Where'd you find it, Temple? In a tree, about 10 yards away from the Vic. Oh, right through him, didn't it? Shot at close range. Brander, these are uh, accurate up to what, 50 yards? Yes, sir, approximately. All right, Temple, would you run a ballistics test on every musket within that perimeter? Look. I was just following my assignment. That's all. I came here to represent the Black Infantry, not disgrace it. 
Do you know anybody that wanted your husband dead? We used to get a lot of phone calls in the middle of the night. You were being harassed? Mm -hmm. Went on for about four or five months. We'd answer the phone, they'd hang up. And you think it was Robert Hopkins? Will thought so. Hopkins filed an anti-discrimination suit against the Fort Stevens reenactment company. He wanted to join the reenactments as a member of the Black Infantry. Your husband was named as a defendant. Yeah. We couldn't afford a lawyer, so... Will eventually caved, and Hopkins was allowed to join the reenactments. Mrs. Davies, why would your husband have any objection to Mr. Hopkins taking part? I guess he didn't think it'd be appropriate. reinforced and the windows are made of ballistic glass, which means the perp gets stuck inside until we say open sesame. Thank you, Detective. My pleasure. This is what 150,000 gets you these days, huh? Jack, we need a bait car. The number of car thefts in this city. Oh, I read the numbers, Sherry. But they're not just hijacked. We're the auto theft capital, no pun intended. The last two months alone, auto thefts have gone up 10%. Well, I'll check with your CI see if there's a new player in town or an old one back in business again. All right. Oh, Jack, get in. OK. There's four hidden cameras connected up to a live feed. You come with cup holders? Ah, uh, Chief, you got to be kidding. This baby's got it all. All we got to do is plant the bait and wait for the fish to bite. You know, we should get some... You know, we never talked like that before you got here. <laughs> excited. This bad girl's got it all? God. So who does that look like? I have no idea. Are you looking at the right face? The guy on the far left. This guy right here. He looks just like you, doesn't he? No. Oh, Deputy Chief, look at those deep-set eyes, that, that jawline chiseled from granite, that, that egg-shaped head. Sorry, sir. We matched the mini ball to the rifle used by Hopkins. 165 dealers still carry this period ammo. Most of them are reenactment outfitters. Yeah, but nobody was issued anything live other than gunpowder. So if Hopkins shoots Davies, he's got to bring the bullet himself. We confirm that there was a lawsuit. Will Davies refused to allow the black infantry to participate until Hopkins sued. We're checking the court for papers now. We also spoke to the reenactment commander. He said that Hopkins asked to be the one to fire the shot at the flag bearer. Did he? So it's not a coincidence that he was assigned to shoot Davies? No, sir. He could have been set up. You know, last year, a guy showed up with chains around his wrists and his ankles. Said he was protesting on behalf of the slaves turned soldiers. That, that could have been Hopkins. Sir, does that look like the deputy chief to you? Look at that. Same eyes, same... Egg-shaped head, my gosh. Where'd you get this picture? You found it on Mr. Hopkins, and I made a copy. Joe, didn't you tell me what your grandmother told you? You had family that served in the Civil War? There you go. See, aren't you even curious? That guy could be related. I can see the resemblance. Oh, he's related. All right, I don't have time for this, and it's not egg-shaped head. It's, it's melon-shaped. Melon. So Hopkins and Davies have got a beef. We have a guy representing the Confederates who refuses to acknowledge the contributions of African-American soldiers. I'd say those two would be enemies. Is that a reason to kill him? Let's ask him. I did not kill Will Davies. Mm-hmm. You filed a discrimination suit against him, didn't you? You made numerous phone calls to his house, to his place of work. His wife says that you harassed him for half a year, and then you specifically requested to shoot him. Chief Mannion. Fort Stevens was the most significant battle that took place in D.C. I wanted the black infantry to be represented there. Now, if that makes me guilty of something, then fine. But I did not kill the man. Uh-huh. You had the opportunity, you had the motive, you had the weapon. 
Do you have a problem with taking a lie detector test? No. Not at all. Hmm, he has your eyes. That's what everyone seems to think. You two related? Well, I don't know. I don't know his name, and I really don't know where to start. Let me see. Take a look at the buttons on his guard jacket. The eagle surmounted by the shield and the raised eye. That's infantry. The 54th K Company. Means he probably signed up around Boston. Miss Kavanaugh, I am very impressed. Now, my father was a Civil War buff. Every summer, we'd hit the road and visit battlefields. Look, you ever want to get out of the lawyer racket? I got a job for you as a detective. Thanks. I'll keep that in mind. Miss Kavanaugh, we're ready? Oh, thank you, Counselor. Chief? Do you think Mr. Davies was a racist? Yes. I believe Mr. Davies was a racist. But no way did that influence my decision to request to shoot the flag bearer. I had no reason to kill Mr. Davies. I'm sorry. I realize that you're in the middle of this. Uh, can I speak to you for a moment? Asked me if we wanted to get a burger after work. I don't get it. The score is tied. Kicker comes in to kick a field goal. He's all warmed up. He lines up the kick. He can practically taste the champagne. And the other coach calls a timeout. It completely throws him off. He's no longer in charge. So, if Hopkins was mentally prepared, he's rattled now. All right. So, the Confederates advance over this hill and the black infantry is advancing from here now, well, where's davies uh davies the flag bearers right here mm -hmm. yeah right here right okay the confederates keep advancing isolating davies right right now the coroner said the trajectory was dead on, no more than 20 feet away. And there were five other soldiers in the vicinity. Right, well, they were all given assignments. They were to split up. And in doing that, they isolate Hopkins on David. He was the only one at close range, Chief. Chief? Hopkins passed. According to the polygraph, he's telling the truth. He ran his record. He's been arrested twice for disorderly conduct during demonstrations, once on the mall, once on a college campus, both for resisting arrest. So while he's not a major violator, he's not a saint either. He works at the Smithsonian. He's a tour guide. He also edits history textbooks. Yeah. Okay, so he's a nerd. It doesn't make him a killer. What's your gut tell you, Temple? He's innocent. Or he's a world-class liar. There's not enough here to take to the U.S. attorney. What do we do until then? We still work on it. Mm -hmm. Tell you what. Why don't you talk to Ennis, the man that rented Hopkins' weapon? We're on it. Thanks. Detective Page, this is Detective Paris. We'd like to have a word with you. Okay. May we come in? Wipe your feet. I remember that fella. Never done any reenacting before. Did he seem suspicious in any way? <laughs> they all seem suspicious. Excuse me? I mean, those folks with something to prove. They all seem distrustful. What do you think he had to prove? You know, Will Davies was a friend of mine. That uppity Hopkins fella had it in for him. Man had diary of the mouth when it came to his beliefs. So you think he killed Davies? Hell yeah. Look, he filed suit against us for not letting him join the reenactment. He hated my partner's hell. I bet he'd have taken a shot at me if he had the opportunity. Did you get the impression that he knew how to handle the weapon? You know, the fella just paid for his rental and went on his way. 
Didn't ask too many questions, figured he'd handled them before. Maybe you just didn't feel like taking the time to show him how to use it. Not there to teach, detective. Do you think Mr. Hopkins had time to reload the weapon with live ammunition before the actual battle began? Oh, yeah. Look, I was there an hour before sign-in and registration. He was one of the first ones through the booth. Look, he had plenty of time. He had plenty of reason. And if you're through, I was taking a nap. Charming fellow. Feel my bullet spray. Black guys kissing white skin Sounds so sick to me Feel this gonna have to go in It's a noose for release Enter! Hey, Chief. We're rolling on the bait cart tonight. Hey, G. Who's your second? Detective Regan. Chief of Detectives gonna sit surveillance with you? She wants to get her hands dirty. What can I tell you? Uh, good for her. A little field work helps keep the rust off. She's a tough cookie. Watch yourself. Is that you? N no. Yeah, it is. It's one of those old-time photographs you get taken at, like, uh, an amusement park, right? That's a Civil War photograph. Some folks around here think this uh, guy might be some kin to me. Really? Census Bureau. Don't know. I don't have time for that, Detective. You know, I always wondered about that Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. The guy's got family somewhere he doesn't know he's a hero. Just a thought. French fry? No, thanks. I'm good. I know. You're disgusting. Mm. I can't help it. It's my weakness. Well, for me, it's pie and ice cream. Rhubarb. Mmm. Apple. For the chief, it's chili dogs. Really? Messy. You two were together for a while. Oh, you're brave. Oh. Look, I I'm not trying to get personal. It was just... Typical detective on a stakeout chit-chat, that's all. You're not buying that, are you? No. So why did you guys split? <laughs> oh, 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 we're in play. Yes, 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 yes. Ooh, we hot damn, we got one. Does that face register anywhere on your radar? No, how about you? Uh-uh. Wanna see that? He's trying to bypass the alarm. Bad boy. Uh-huh. What was that? I don't know. Uh, it doesn't look good. Try the remote. Where's the remote? The doors aren't opening. Try it again. No, 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 let's go! Quick, I'm on it. Drive. I'm going, I'm going. Get a bait car shut down. We need an ambulance. Surveillance position one. Surveillance position one. I repeat, an ambulance. Get the fire extinguisher.
fine. He's had smoke inhalation. They want him to spend the night. I'm going to want to see the surveillance tapes. We can interrogate the suspect from here. Well, he's not going to be talking for at least a few hours. His doctor says he's got severe respiratory injury. Apparently the fire melted some plastic and it gave off cyanide. How long was he trapped in the car? A minute. Vehicle locked down midway through the booth, just like it was supposed to. <laughs> Next thing we know, there's smoke everywhere. Shut up. I stop really... talking. <laughs> CSU is still taking the car apart. Their prelim turned up a short in the electrical system. Detroit's electrical or arm modification? Don't know yet. But we both know that won't matter. When they start assigning blame, they'll be looking right at us. I don't expect you to be objective. Kavanaugh, I wasn't going to say anything, but I am going to say something. I'm going to say it right now. This is a new low for you. Oh, you always say that. We have your client on tape breaking into the vehicle. I'm not disputing Hector Vega's career. But face it, Jack, your people messed up using equipment that wasn't properly tested. His injuries are a result of him breaking into the car's electrical system. You're saying it was contributory negligence that my client is partially responsible? Yeah. It won't hold up. Your detectives deliberately targeted Mr. Vega using a trap like he was an animal. Kevin, this is not a battle you can win. You know me better than that. I'll be in contact regarding deposition. Yeah. Still looking bad for Hopkins. And it's confirmed he had time to reload the musket. We looked at every confiscated picture and videotape taken at the battle. There's still nothing to indicate that there could have been a second shooter. So the two guys are men? This guy's got nothing in his profile that makes me think he's capable of murder. All right, get me Hopkins, get me the weapon. Meet me up on the range. Thanks for coming, Mr. Hopkins. Appreciate it. Uh, what am I doing here? Well, uh, we were actually going to have a ballistic test on the weapon you fired, measure its recoil, and I appreciate your help. I uh, think I should have my lawyer present. Absolutely. You want to call him? Go right ahead. There's a phone right down the hall. Every criminal has his rights. What do I have to do? If you wouldn't mind, just load the weapon. Well, I've only done it a few times. I'm not that familiar with it. Well, give it a try. Humorous. Fire it, please. All right, thank you. I thought you wanted me to fire it. You can go. fired it, barrel blows out in his face, forgot the cap. Then he couldn't have loaded the weapon on the day. I'm afraid the senior census of population and housing on individuals does not become available to the public until after 72 years. But the man I'm trying to find was born over 150 years ago. He looks like you. That's uh, a general consensus. We both got the same. Uh, uh... Right, right, right. I'm sorry, but we have very little in our records. The African-American population during the Civil War was never properly documented. At the time, the U.S. government considered slaves three-fifths of a person for census purposes. Of course, we weren't legally citizens of the United States then. We were considered to be property. Try 
Try NARA. NARA? National Archives and Records Administration. Archives and Records. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. down the same smoking chemicals you did. How old are you, Hector? 18. 18. Well, you practically just got your driver's license. You don't seem like a kid who steals cars to me. You know, in the video, there was a moment where, even though no one was around, you seemed kind of nervous. You haven't been doing this long, have you? It's not why you caught me. Mm -hmm. It's because your trap messed up. Nah, your wiring was bad. It took your brother years to perfect it. I did some checking. Your brother Emilio was released two months ago. I did a nickel for auto theft. So what? So I think you were trying to impress him. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Phil. Uh -huh. Who's William Burke? Hey, you mean Boots? Everyone calls him that because he runs his stable and he's always knee-high deep. I get it. What, what do you need old boots for? He's the third co-defendant in the suit Hopkins files. Hopkins never got in my business. I never even heard of him to the lawsuit. So you never met him? No, ma'am. I never even seen the fella to the day of the reenactment. You ever tried to contact him? No, sir. As far as I know, that man believed in what he was doing. If it was up to me, Without Innocent Davis, I'd have let him participate. The black infantry spilled blood on that battlefield. They had every right to be represented. We're trying to piece together why Hopkins would want to murder Will Davies. Maybe because Davies was a piece of crap redneck. So you didn't like him? Ain't nobody liked him, not even his business partners. That's why they split up. Who's his partner? Ray Ennis. They had one of the biggest Civil War memorabilia businesses in the country. Till they had some kind of disagreement and split up. And Davis took most of the clientele, and Ennis resented it. And I don't blame him. Davis ripped him off. <laughs> I don't know, but if I was you, I'd be looking in that direction instead of trying to railroad some poor activist. Thanks. Yeah, you know, I think it's not about it. Hey, Boots give you anything? He thinks Ennis killed Davis, said Ennis and Davis had a beef, started when they split up as business partners. Got a war? at home. He doesn't need to be. Hi, let me speak to Ray. It's important.
turn around. Slowly. You don't want to do this. Put the gun down, Ray. He's trespassing. The man's got a right to protect his property. We have a warrant. Another time. Take this evidence, get a voucher, then take it right down to the lab. Okay. That gunpowder matches that we found on the victim. We also found similar mini bullets. Mm -hmm. Brander, you said that Ray Ennis could have known that Hopkins was assigned to shoot Davies? Yes, sir. All the assignments are posted. You sure about that? Yes, sir. So you're thinking that Ennis loaded the bullet and then told Hopkins he was just shooting a blank? Mm -hmm. He used Hopkins to do his dirty work. Yeah, bring him in. Welcome to your worst nightmare. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, one will be provided for you by the court. Do you understand these rights as have been explained to you? We got an address on a warehouse that Hector's brother Emilio's been frequenting. You know, this really isn't necessary. I can walk. It's policy. Enjoy the ride. So this warehouse, you think it's a chop shop? No, we're sending some undercovers to check it out. Telling that Emilio is our man. Hector's just a kid. He's the kind of small fish that we throw back. Barely 18 years old. You saved his life. You think? Kids going to jail, what kind of save is that? Well, who knows? Maybe a little time in jail will give him a chance to think. You know, put him on the straight and narrow. Well, no, as long as his brother's around, I don't think that's possible. If the chop shop pans out, his brother won't be around for very much longer. Detectives? Miss Kavanaugh. My client called, said he had a visitor last night. What was your intention, Detective? Coercion? Let us do our job, okay? Detective Debrino is a patient here. His presence in no way compromised your client's rights. You questioned my client without his lawyer present. He didn't ask for you. I was just going to ask him that. Go right ahead. I will. Miss Kavanaugh. Miss Kavanaugh. Do you really think you can sue the department over this? A man was nearly killed. It was an accident. The bait car program is still in the pilot phase with the MPD. Isn't that right? Mm-hmm. What's your point? My point is somebody screwed up here. It's either the manufacturer of the components that make up the bait car, the distributor of the bait car, or it was the MPD. Can you figure? Perhaps you didn't follow proper instructions. It's not a toaster oven. A thief was stealing a car. We responded, and we saved his life. Look, I don't want it to be the MPD's fault. Then why won't you let us complete our internal investigation? It could easily be the manufacturer's responsibility. That's not what I do. I don't do product liability cases. Don't take this personally, Sherry. But I sue police departments. I don't know why I went in. Couldn't sleep, I guess. Next time, count sheep. You ever do something like that again? You're going to be writing parking tickets. What? I thought you were on my side on this one. Oh, Sherry, good. Hi. Yeah. Um. Oh, Jack, no. No! Uh. All right, just say it. Just say it quickly. It'll be less painful. Well, we're going to suspend the bait car program, and I'm going to settle. Jack, we didn't do anything wrong. That's often the case, but rarely the point. What does that mean? The department's up to its neck in accusations. I don't want to see one of my best detectives get the reputation tarnished. I'll risk it. I'll fight it. I'll Jack. take the responsibility. Honey, honey, we're going to settle. We're settling. We're settling. He was my great-great-grandfather, the man in the picture. You were right. Do you have a name? Yeah, Shombe. It's Swahili for he who walks like a lion. Guy took care of some horses on a plantation, South Carolina. 1861, he escapes. He signs up with the Fighting 54th, works his way up to second lieutenant. Second in command. 
It's a family curse. Now, he who walks like a lion. Why, that name fits you well, Phil. Yeah, the next uh, guy, next to Shombe, the man standing in there, Dumasani. Arrested by the Confederates, sent back to his plantation where he was hung. The owner of that plantation, Confederate soldier by the name of Richard Davies. The great-great-grandfather of your victim, Will Davies. Oh, come on. Even stranger. Dumasani, distant relationship to one Robert Hopkins. Are you kidding me? Bing. Bada bing. Bing. Andrew Rickenshield. Emilio Vega? That's right. You're under arrest for auto theft. Call for me. You should have been a better role model. Yeah, come in. Hopkins used an alias to buy gunpowder from Ennis. He had it sent to a P.O. box. What about the mini ball? Hopkins' order was just for gunpowder. CSU found traces that match what we found at the scene. But we still can't connect Hopkins to the mini ball. You know what we need? A field trip. Come on. The Battle of Gettysburg in 1863 lasted three days. The combined casualties of dead, wounded, and missing was 51,112. Any questions before we continue? How about a man named Dumasani? Sorry, sir, but that's not part of this tour. You all would please put on your headsets and play chapter two. That should take you to your next exhibit. So this was like a 140-year-old vendetta, right? You got the gunpowder from Ennis. For the longest time, I couldn't figure out how you got the ammo. Then it hit me. I'm not just getting slow in old age. You had access to it all along. Robert Hopkins, you're under arrest for the murder of Will Davies. The right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in court of law. Yes, the blacks enjoy their freedom. And they won it dearly, too. For the lifeblood of their thousands did the southern field bedew. In the darkness of their bondage and the depths of slavery's night, their muskets flashed the dawning, and they fought their way to light. Paul Lawrence Dunbar. His father served in Company F, F 54th, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Yeah. Shoulder to shoulder with my great-great-grandfather. They uh, didn't think blacks had the intelligence, the courage, or the discipline to be combat soldiers. We did all right. Yeah, I mean, for $50 and freedom, I'd say that was pretty courageous. Yeah. Let's go home, Joe. In an hour, Gibbs and the gang go after the truth when a Navy commander's found dead with notorious drug runners. Don't miss the witching hour with the NCIS crew at midnight. And getting you in the mood, up next, Reno takes on a brutal kidnapper with revenge in mind in Explosive Renegade. <laughs>